Michael Bloomberg appears to be picking up steam with new endorsements on Capitol Hill. And can Joe Biden pull out a win in South Carolina? And will Super Tuesday be the most pivotal day in the Democratic primary? Joining us now at The Debrief is The Hill's editor-in-chief, Bob Cusack. Great to see you, sir. Hey. Good to see you, Bob. Let's start here with Joe Biden. Yeah. What's going on? With, how are his donors feeling all, about all of this? What is his game plan? And what is the path back into contention for him? Those are great questions, and I think they should be asking that because <laughs> they, should be, they should be thinking about a reboot. I mean, he's got to do something different. The argument yeah. of I can be Trump has not worked. I thought his speech in South Carolina on the night of the New Hampshire primary was not good. Um, you know, his donors are worried. Now, the expectations have dropped for him in South Carolina. Uh, I think it's probably 50-50 or maybe less than that he's actually going to win South Carolina. Um, but if he were to win South Carolina now, that would give him the boost he needs into Super Tuesday. If he finishes second or lower, I mean, he's got no momentum going to Super Tuesday, and he's in real trouble. Yeah, I think yeah. that's right. I mean, we should say, I think James, Cly James Clyburn, who's a surrogate yep. for the Biden campaign, said that Biden is still the number one uh, contender in South Carolina. <clears throat> Don't know how much of that is bluster or not. I mean, how long it'll last. Or how long it will last. And that's the interesting thing. I mean, we, we talked about it in the intro that Michael Bloomberg is sitting right there. He just got two congressional endorsements, yep. Bob. These are both members of the Congressional Black Caucus. Yeah, had the con like, controversial audio that came yes. out on Stop and Frisk, and then the next day has these endorsements come out from the Congressional Black Caucus. Wow. That is good campaigning right there. Now, maybe he had them in their pocket, but that's great timing. He knew. He knew it was going yeah, to come. come out. And the same yes. thing. I, I covered it in my monologue today. Alabama's largest black caucus of state delegates just endorsed him yesterday. Yep. Alabama's a huge state with black Americans. There's something he's yeah. doing with members of Congress, and we've talked to him, mm -hmm. uh, the members, where he... He is impressing them one on one. Some of them he's had relationship. Yeah. Some of them His checkbook he's not. is impressing. Them. Checkbook <laughs> is certainly <laughs> is impressive. But I mean, like Congresswoman uh, Escobar, who replaced yeah. Beto O'Rourke, she backed him, of course. And she's thinking uh, about. Remember, Texas is up on Super yes. Tuesday. She's thinking about endorsing, and she said some nice things about Bloomberg. Hasn't endorsed him yet, but she's the, like wow. the opposite. She's a Latina, and and he's a New York former New York mayor yes. from New York. So we'll see. We'll see. But Bloomberg is doing well. Let's see if that continues, certainly uh, going into the debate next week and, and going forward on Well, Tuesday. Nancy Pelosi had nice things to say about him. I mean, yeah. the, Hill, the Hill wrote yep. about that. About, I mean, what, what's that about? He's given tons of money yeah. to the Democratic yeah. Party. Well, think about it. Who's yeah. one of the most powerful people in the Democratic Party? I mean, you could say Obama is probably mm -hmm. the most powerful. Uh, and, and his, you know, he said nice things about Warren. She's not doing so well now. He didn't endorse Biden. Maybe that looks good. Uh, Pelosi, I wonder about if she's trying to mm -hmm. sway uh, a certain way because I'm, uh, you know, there are some moderate uh, Democrats who are from Trump districts who are nervous about Bernie Sanders, and he's got a real shot to win this nomination, right. winning the nomination. That, they say, could hurt them. Hmm. Yeah, interestingly, though, I mean, the head-to-heads we see so far, Bloomberg doesn't do well against Trump. Yeah. Bernie does much better. But, you know, they have their own ideas about who's electable and who's not. Well, and, and you think about, you know, the next state is Nevada, and there's really no polling that's recent in Nevada. So, uh, now, Bernie did very well in Nevada in 2016. He only lost by five points to, right. to Hillary Clinton. He's coming off that big New Hampshire win. So, you know, that's a, that's a big contest, too. You know, does Biden get some momentum? Can he actually pull up an upset Is in he Nevada? even really playing in Nevada? It I mean, he went straight way. from New Hampshire to South Carolina, yeah. which was very telling. The Culinary Union, yep. it seemed like, wanted to endorse Biden, but he didn't give them any reason to. No. So they just sit on their hands and endorse no one. That's really, uh, I mean, that's lucky for Bernie because they were never going to endorse him. But that seems like a real problem for Biden in that state. That could have been a big boost for him. It could have been. And, you know, with Nevada, as you know, you got to think about uh, Harry Reid and his machine. He's yeah. retired, but he's still powerful. Mm -hmm. He has never liked Bernie Sanders. He has said Medicare for All is a bad idea that could never pass Congress. So you would just wonder if Harry Reid's fingerprints are over this uh, union coming out against it's Medicare for All. It's interesting, too. Seems that way. Biden yes. said on The View yesterday he expects to get first or second in South Carolina, I mean, in Nevada, and then first in South Carolina. I mean, he still thinks he might win Nevada, Bob. Yeah, yeah, I mean, listen, I think he just has to do something different. And I mm -hmm. think that's what we have to look for, certainly uh, between now and the end of the month in South Carolina. Because that, I mean, Nevada, if he's dis if it's disappointing, he can say, well, we're going on in South Carolina. 
But the Joey, he's just not going to have the money to last yeah. going forward if he doesn't do well in South Carolina. Yeah. I mean, meanwhile, it's easy to lose sight of the fact because we still have Nevada and South Carolina, but Super Tuesday is just around the corner here. Yeah. I mean, you're talking 14 states. You've got California and Texas, over a combined 600 delegates there. So uh, will we have clarity on, on Super Tuesday? I mean, obviously, the big factor is, is Bloomberg. How well can he do on Super Tuesday? How many states can he win? Uh, and, and what about Klobuchar and Buttigieg? I mean, I just think this race is, is you know, no one has really fallen in love with one candidate. Mm -hmm. So. I, I just, again, think this is going to go on for quite some time. I think it will, too. It's going to be interesting. I mean, the interesting thing with Amy and Pete is there was a lot made of their performance in New Hampshire. Right. But if you look basically anywhere else, I mean, they're not doing very well. Right. They're not doing well in those Super Tuesday states. And there's such a massive difference, organizational difference, between trying to compete in one state versus trying to compete in how many states go on Super Tuesday? Like 14. 14. 14, yeah. yeah. Wow. Trying to compete in that big of a, a territory, you know, the, the yeah. research, the Sanders campaign, the Warren campaign to a certain extent, the Biden campaign, and now Bloomberg, they have had operations on the ground there. They have the money, well, Biden not maybe quite yeah, so much, but so they've much, had yes. the money to have resources on the ground and be already speaking to these voters. Amy and Pete are trying to play catch up and, you know, they have a major disadvantage also in that voters of color seem to have no use for them. Mm. That's a big problem for them. I think it's it's more of a problem for, for Amy Klobuchar just because uh, she doesn't have the money. She's getting more money now. Yeah, but that too late. Judge has. Right. It's too late. You can't. Especially, I mean, March third is is right around Literally. the corner. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I, I think that's a real problem. But you, I mean, it's a minority vote. That's the key. You've got yeah. to get a big chunk of the minority vote. They don't have it right now. Yeah, they really don't. All right, Bob. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, Bob. Appreciate it. Coming up, we're going to dive into labor's role in the 2020 race with Jackman staff writer Bronco Marcetic. That is next.